Hello, this is Rowdy Kimmis Jr. bringing you another exciting uh, lesson in solving X-ray crystal structures. In today's lesson, we'll be looking at a compound, an organic compound, and solving it using Olex uh, structure solution package and not Olex. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So I've already gone ahead and opened up the uh, .res file here. It just contained information like the unit cell, chemical formula, uh, errors in the unit cell, the symmetry operators, uh, what else, the Z value and things like that. There's no atomic positions or anything to that nature. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go to work and to solve, but just a few things before we delve into that. You know, the I over sigma is, is pretty good. This is very good data, 43, you know, 10 or better is what we're looking for. R int is pretty good, 3.5%. And you, so you see the majority of these are green. So let's solve it. And I'm using olex2.solve, uh, space group P1 bar. But if you want to look for a different space group, you can go to suggest space group. And it still suggests uh, P1 bar. So let's go ahead and hit solve. So the solving's done and it gives us an electron density plot of this crystal structure. Then we're gonna click assign and this is gonna label or identify some of the atom types based on the chemical formula we've given it uh, here as well. Now, whenever you see this orange, these two orange arrows that are in a circle, this means you can update the uh, chemical formula. Now we're gonna to go to refine. I'd like to go ahead and set the acta here and hit refine. And the cycles, you know, four or five cycles is good if you want it to converge on the first uh, refinement. If it doesn't converge, you just try a few more times on the refinement. So we hit refine. Hit refine again. So just a few things here. Let's move some of these Q peaks away. Uh, this carbon here is actually a fluorine. So these are two CF3 groups. So right click type, make it a fluorine. And if we do a grow, uh, we see that this carbon here is also a fluorine as well. So let's go ahead and change that. Right click type fluorine. Now we do a fuse, it deletes the symmetry related components. Let's see if I can get this to look a little bit better. Refine again. I right, still broke it apart. And you want to, you know, it's always good to have it to make sure you refine it so that the shift parameter converges before you move on to another part. So now we've labeled all the atom types. Next, we want to do anisotropic refinement. So model ANISL. Again, we see the orange circle with the arrows. We can click on that. It'll update the chemical formula.
And so if you notice here, you see this atom, the thermal ellipsoid is quite small. So this would indicate maybe it's a slightly larger atom. So here, if we right click and go to type, let's change it to a nitrogen. And this O2 is a lot larger than the carbon, the thermal ellipsoid. So maybe this is the wrong atom type. It's too large of an atom type. So let's right click and make this a little bit smaller. And here we have an azide here. Right click, check the bond distance. So that NN bond is like a 1.229. So it's like an NN double bond. Secondly, we have a small thermal ellipsoid here at the one labeled C8. So we right click. Let's change this to maybe a, a nitrogen. So we think it looks something like this. And again, we're going to refine. And you see we got better a better model for the data. So let's refine one more time just to converge the shift parameter. So the next thing we want to do is add hydrogens. And there's many ways to, to add a hydrogen. You can click here, add hydrogens down in the toolbox. I like to, I'm, like to go to the tools, hydrogen atoms, add hydrogen atoms. Either way, it's, it'll work. Oh, we got a growing structure. There we go. Add hydrogen atoms. So there shouldn't be any hydrogen atom on this nitrogen nitrogen double bond. And for this one, we want to use electron density peaks to locate that hydrogen. So we'll delete that. But all the rest of them seem to match up with the electron density peaks. You see our R values are getting smaller. So here this peak off of this nitrogen, we bang. Look at the distance is about 0.893, which is a hydrogen, you know, typical nitrogen hydrogen bond distance. Let's make that a hydrogen. Hit refine. And one thing you want to do with these is you want to set USIO to 1.2x. So generally with carbon bound hydrogen atoms and nitrogen bound hydrogen atoms, the USIO, UIOS, UISO is set to 1.2X, but for your methyl hydrogen atoms and your hydroxyl hydrogen atoms, usually it's set to 1.5X. So I'll set this to 1.2X and hit refine. So I'm just refining and refining to converge the shift parameter before I make any new changes. All righty. So now pretty much the structure is pretty much solved. We're going to look at a few other things to help better the refinement. 
first thing I want to do is look at this chart here by clicking on the percent sign. And you see that there are some reflections or some data that don't fit this linear trend. So this would be a good idea to maybe omit some of this data that doesn't follow this linear trend here. So the way we're going to do that, if we go to info, bad reflections, we can omit this data. But one other thing we want to check before we omit that is if we go to reflection statistics, I over sigma versus resolution, you know, most of it is, uh, is fairly good even after 50 degrees to theta, which is the minimum cutoff for Molly radiation. We still have pretty decent uh, reflection data, just as data around 60 degrees to theta is very poor. So one thing you can do sometimes is omit a certain high angle data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna omit all the high angle data above 57 degrees uh, to theta. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to edit instruction. And in this second list of instructions, I'm just gonna add an inner or hit enter and type omit negative 357. And this should omit all the data above 57 degrees to theta. So we hit okay and we hit refine. So let me just update the formula again. And so we got a better R factor because we emitted some of that weekly diffracting data. From our reflections. Just converging. Now that we omitted that high angle data, let's go back and look at bad reflections, see if there's any left. There's one, so this one's greater than 10, we can click omit. Click refine. Refine one more time. We're getting us a pretty decent uh, model. Now, if we go back to info, take a look at the reflection statistics. I like the I over sigma resolution. So again, all of that, all of the data above 57 degrees to theta, we omit it. Now our I over sigma is pretty good, 46. Our R is 3.5%, not bad. Completion, 99.9%. .9%. So we're looking good. We're starting to get most of these as green. So green is good. The goof we'll talk about in just a second. Uh, so the another thing you can do is you know labeling the atoms. So what I do is I go to mode naming. You do this for each atom type. Click start on the oxygens, we do O1. Then we do the nitrogens, N1, N2, N3, N4. Let's do the chlorines. And now we'll do the carbon.
So now everything is properly labeled. Let's do a refinement. Again, shift parameters are looking quite nice. All righty, so we're narrowing it. We're getting down to the, the end of this now. So one other thing we'd like to uh, do is these weighting parameters. We have weighting one and weighting two. I like to call these like fudge factors, but that's not the technical term for it. But that's just what I like to call them. So weighting one, what it does is it, you know, it lowers the R factor, but it causes the goof to go up. And the second weighting parameter, it helps lower the goof. And we want the goof or goodness of fit to be around one. Typically between one and 1.1 is ideal, but as long as it's green, you know, you're, you're good. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna, you know, Olex gives us some recommended weighting values. We're gonna use those. And then you can always manually adjust them if you want by going to edit instruction and then changing them uh, to what you want. Just remember that you need to decrease weighting one and you need to increase weighting two. However, just bear in mind that your weighting two parameter shouldn't be very large. I mean, less than five is ideal. And if you have good data, typically the second weighting parameter is less than five, sometimes even less than one. If you notice that your weighting parameter for the second or the second weighting parameter is quite large, I'm saying 30, 40, sometimes 150. There may be something systematically wrong with the data set or your structure model. So that has happened a few times. So I'm gonna use the recommended weighting parameters suggested by Olex. So let me click on that, click refine, and we should see a decrease in the R factor as well. So quite good, you know, our uh, goodness of fits 0.993, R1, 5.1%, R2, 10.5%. This is a pretty good uh, structure. It does suggest another one. So let's refine again. And you can keep on refining the weighting parameters until they go uh, green. So that's what I'm doing. And once they're green, I mean, that's good enough. You just check your goof, make sure it's above, you know, between one and 1.1 is ideal. So now it's kind of converged the weighting parameters. Let's just refine one more time to converge the shift. Yeah, one more time. Again, if you wanna not have to keep on refining, you can increase the number of cycles and that will help it. So now what I wanna do is just go back to info and just check to see if there's any more bad reflections. Sometimes when you uh, change the weighting parameters, you may observe some reflections become uh, ready to omit, meaning their error over ESD is greater than 10 or greater. So here we're still good. Again, if you roll the mouse down, you can delete the Q peaks. If you roll the mouse up, you can increase the Q peaks. So now one thing I wanna do is a little bit more of bookkeeping is the report. And so we wanna use the SIFT OD file data. The CIFOD file is another file generated by the diffractometer computer that contains information about the experiment, you know, diffraction, uh, information like the diffractometer, the scan times, et cetera, stuff about the experiment, like the size of the crystal, the unit cell, et cetera. So things like that, that helps fill in about the absorption correction as well. So this crystal uh, was a colorless crystal so clear, colorless, 
mounting was a nylon loop. Now the size, if you go to the uh, Chris, uh, the SIFT OD file, SIFT OD file, it should be in there. So that's what I'm going to do right now and get the, so I was able to find the size. It was 0 0.4, 0 0.23, 0 0.1. So this is the size of the crystal that was used in the experiment. And actually I was mistaken on the color. It's a dark yellow color. Now you need to make sure you put the information about the size and shape uh, because this will cause a check if A error if you don't include this information. So it's good to do that for diffraction. So it picked up the diffractometer for one of the files. But again, if you go to the, the SIFT, the dot dash od file, it'll have the diffraction temperature, the cell measurement temperature, and both of these are 98 Kelvin. So make sure you put it in Kelvin. The absorption correction, let's see if it picked it up. Yeah, so it picked up the absorption correction from one of the supplemental files. So this was multi-scan and T-min and T-max. So make sure you have these three, you know, the absorption correction, the fraction, and uh, the crystal information entered. Now, if you're using an old data set from, for example, that was collected on Crystal Clear, it was one of Rigaku's earlier uh, softwares used for the diffractometer, this information would be kept in the crystalclear.sif file. But in the newer diffractometers where we use Crystalis Pro, or not the newer, the newer program, Crystalis Pro, that we use, usually this is found in the SIF OD file or other types of machine files that are created. Typically it's in the SIF OD file. So now we can hit refine. And make sure down here that the merge SIF is checked. Sometimes, you know, especially if, you have, if it's a newer. Uh, if you just installed it, it may not check this box. You want to make sure you check uh, merge SIF. So then we want to refine. So it updates our SIF file with this information. And now we're ready to do a check SIF. Actually, one other thing that caught my attention is if we look at the Z and Z prime, so Z are the number of entities in the unit cell, which is based on the asymmetric unit and the number of symmetry operators for the space group you're in. And Z prime is the asymmetric unit. And so here it says Z prime is two molecules. But you see in our asymmetric unit, we only have one molecule. So we wanna change Z prime from two to one. So we need to change Z from four to two. So what we do is we go to edit, edit instructions. And we wanna see where it says the, the line that starts off in the edit instruction file called Zer, Z-E-R-R. -E -E the first number after that is the Z value. We just want to change that from four to two. Hit OK and hit refine. If you don't change the Z value to the correct one, it'll give you an error that your the, the molecular weight and the formulas between the calculated and reported structure are not correct. And that's usually due to the uh, uh, Z factor. So now everything's looking good. You know, if you're anal about wanting everything to be green, if we do one more refinement, that should put everything into the green threshold. So now we're green. Green is good. We got good R factors, 5.1%, 9.4%. We're rocking along. Now we're ready to do a check SIF. So let's scroll down. 
Now, if the button on the check SIF for some reason it's it's not loading up, you can always Google IUCR check SIF and upload your file there and check the SIF there. So we'll go ahead and check SIF. Make sure there's no system, you know, uh, major errors with the structure. Mainly, we're looking at check SIF A, uh, check SIF B errors in the check SIF file. Then I'll be doing another video on the same structure, but instead of using the OLEX uh, structure solution and refinement programs, I'm going to use ShellX to show you the slight, you know, the, how if it's there is any difference or not. And so we did one with using OLEX. I'm going to do another one with the same structure, but using uh, ShellX. So now let's check our. Uh, check SIF file. So here Z is one. I have Z is two, so I need to change that to one. Uh, coordinates not form a properly connected set. That's because of that fluorine atom. So we'll change that. You know, this G error, calculated reported moieties, formula strings differ. Uh, that's because of the Z. So we got a few things uh, to work at. Let me share that with you. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, this is the check SIF. So we're going to address the check SIF error B. They don't form a properly connected sets. And we'll fix the Z value as well. Here it specifies it should be one. So we're going to take a look at these two issues. Now to do the Z value, uh, this is fairly easy. We go to edit, edit instructions. Again, the line that states Z E R R, the number right after that to the right, we're gonna change from two to one, hit okay. And let's see if we can get this to form a properly connected set. So on this carbon 25, if we do a bang explore, we wanna add this, fluorine atom there. And let's delete this one. So now we hit refine. Break the GBs. Didn't work. So now let's look at this again. That's not good, so let's fuse it. So what I did to move this fluorine atom uh, to this position rather than being unconnected is I found out the symmetry operator that was used to generate uh, this atomic position, which was this. So this atom position was negative one minus X, three minus Y, one minus Z. So what I did is I took the coordinates for the fluorine atom that wasn't connected. I plugged in the X, Y, and Z and got the new coordinates and put that in for F6. So if you go to edit atoms, that's how I was able to move this atom uh, to the CF3 group. Now, I'm sure there's probably other ways you can do it as well, but this is just a way that I figured out how to do it uh, within OLEX. But I'm sure other crystallographers may have other uh, methods for doing this as well. But now we got the fluorine atom connected, so all is good. We hit refine again. Let's converge. We'll do another check SIF.
let's see what errors we have now. Probably the Z error, will, the Z value will be an error too, because now that we fixed that issue, it probably has a Z of Z prime of one now. But we'll see. So while we're waiting for that to be done, let me show you how to draw the asymmetric unit. So we click on the arrow next to draw and we can choose, oh, here we go. We got the check SIF. So let's scroll down. So now you see that the Z value calculated is two. The Z value reported is one. So we need to change that from one to two looked at the B level is now gone. So that's a good sign. So now let's go back to Olex and fix the uh, Z value once again. So we go edit instruction. Again, the line that says Z-E-R-R, -R, the number right next to it, we're gonna change to two. And then we're gonna hit refine to update. The SIF file. We go to report. Check SIF. And again, when we're getting ready to draw, if we click on the draw arrow. So if you wanna choose label color, usually I choose the label color, set ambient font to black so that if my labels come out black, if the default is green. And then we wanna do non H. So we have something like this. And then we go to bitmap images. And here, Oh, we got the uh, check SIF report again. Let me go to that. So now the Z value is good. The, the Moiety and some formula are good. So all we have left are some C and G errors. So this is good. We don't need to make any further adjustments uh, to the uh, structure. So that's good. Now let's go back to Shell X and finish up drawing. So if you wanna change the font size, first remove all the labels you have. And then if you go to under the bitmap images, if you go to label fonts, you can change it from 12 to 16 to 20, 24, et cetera. And then whatever changes you make, you just go back and now say select non-hydrogen atoms and hit go. And this is gonna make a JPEG of your asymmetric unit. And you can also do this with packing diagrams as well. And where it says CD1887B, this is where you can change the file name to whatever you'd like. So this was just a, a session on using Olex to perform a structure solution and structure refinement. In the next episode, I'm gonna do the exact same thing and show you using ShellX structure solution and structure refinement. So whether you're using Olex or Shell X, you know, we can see the process is going to be pretty much the same in solving the structure. So I hope you enjoyed this session with the Rowdy Chemist Jr. And until next time, Rowdy Chemist Jr. signing off.